In this tutorial, you will be introduced to SharePoint Web Parts. Information on a web page is displayed through modular components called Web Parts. In order to display the contents of a list or document library on a web page, you add it to the page by means of a Web Part. Web Parts can be placed on pages and configured to present SharePoint content in the most beneficial way for your site. So for this example, we'll be using the training site. And the training department would like to display the training documentation library on the page. And before we do so, we'll take a quick look at that library. I'll click on the link to it on the left here. And this is a library that contains some training manuals and presentations. And they'd like to display them on the web page for people to access for reference. So I'll return to the training page. And to add the web part, I'll go up to Site Actions and then Edit Page. Before adding the library web part, I want to point out the two outlined content areas on the page. These are the areas where web parts can be added to the page. The number of content areas can vary from site to site. So to insert the web part, click on the Insert tab, and then choose Web Part. Three boxes display across the top below the ribbon for adding web parts, titled Categories, Web Parts, and then About the Web Part. Starting on the left is a list of web part categories to select from. The first category is List and Libraries for selecting content from your site, which is already selected. The other categories are for selecting other built-in web parts. When you select a category, the web parts for that category display in the next column. So to select the library, I'll go back to List and Libraries, and then in the middle section, I'll choose the library called Training Documentation. That displays at the top of the Add a Web Part section, and then I'll click on Add. And you can see it added that document library web part to the top of the left content area. So next we'll see how to move a web part. A web part can only be moved within the outlined content areas. As I mentioned earlier, this page only has two content areas on the left and on the right hand side, not including the quick launch navigation on the far left. So to move a web part, you point to the title area, press and hold down the mouse button and drag. So I'll drag this over into the right area between the image and the getting started section. So the image is above the list and getting started is below the list. Now I'll move this training documentation web part over to the left here below announcements. And that makes the left area a lot longer than the right. So I think I'll take announcements and move that over to the right below the image. Balance it out a little better. Now we'll take a look at changing the appearance of a web part. Each web part has its own collection of settings that determine how it functions and displays. I would like to change the columns that are displayed in the web part. I want to remove the modified and modify by columns and add the document category column in their place. To change the properties of a web part, mouse over the web part and to the right of the title, an arrow displays. When you click that, the web part menu drops down and then choose Edit Web Part. The Web Part Tools pane displays on the far right of the screen. You can change the appearance of the web part using a view from the View menu. Initially, the View menu will always display current view as the view it's using. For Document Library, there are two views to select from All Documents, which is what we're looking at now, and we can also select Summary View to see how that looks. Choose OK. And then I'll click the Apply button so it applies this view without taking me out of the Properties tool pane. And that just removed the Modified Date column. To display the list the way I want, I need to customize the view. And I do that by clicking on this link in the tool pane that says Edit the Current View. This opens the View Settings screen. For detailed instructions for changing or creating views, see the tutorial on Views. The only change I'm going to make here is which columns are displayed. So I'll uncheck Type and Modified, and then I want to add Document Category. I'm returned to the web page, and you can see the changes I made in the view to show only the document name and document category 
have been applied. I'm going to quickly show you a couple of other common changes that you can make to a web part. So again, I'll mouse over the title, click the web part drop down for the menu and choose edit web part. And if I expand the appearance section here, first thing I see is the title, training documentation, which relates to the title of the web part. By default, it uses the name of the list as the title but that can be changed. So the title can be changed from something other than the list. So let's say I want to change this to training references. Another common change is to change the Chrome. The Chrome of a web part is the area at the top that holds the title and the web part menu. Down in this Chrome type drop-down list, right now it's set to the default setting, which does show the title. If you select none, that would remove this whole title area, the Chrome, from the list. And you'll see an example of that in the image web part tutorial. Other choices that you have here is to display the title along with the border around the web part, the title only, or the border only. Now for this web part, I'm going to leave this at the default setting, and I'll choose OK to save. And finally, we'll see how to remove a web part from the page. So for this, we'll go up to Site Actions and Edit Page. Mouse over the web part to bring up the web part menu arrow, and then select Delete. It'll warn you that it's about to remove this web part, and you choose OK. This procedure does not delete the web part from the site. It only deletes it from the page. It can be added back to the page at any time.